All right, let's work this example. Um, a boat leaves on an island in a, from an island with a bearing. So the first thing we're going to do is draw that first bearing. Okay, so north 15 degrees east. So I'm just going to draw a line segment kind of up like that. So here's my 15 degrees right here. And the boat travels 70 miles. All right, so we stop at this point. And then now we have a second boat that's leaving. So the second boat leaves from this original island back here, and it travels in a uh, on a bearing south, 27 degrees east. So let's put that this way. 27 degrees. There we go. Um, but they don't know how far they traveled. Okay, so I'm just gonna extend it out there and stop it. So they're in communication with each other and we do know let's connect our triangle here. We do know the distance between them and the distance between them is 165 miles. All right. So what we want to do is we want to find this distance right over here. All right. So there's a picture of the situation. The next thing I want to do is draw a picture of the triangle and I'm going to put the stuff in the triangle that I know. All right. So there's the similar looking triangle. So this side is 70. This side is 165. And that's all I know directly. All right. So I need an angle. And I'm going to calculate this angle right here. So I do know that this whole entire angle right here is 180 degrees. All right, so if I take 180 degrees, if I subtract the 15 degrees, and if I subtract the 27 degrees, that's going to leave me the angle right in here. And when I do that, I end up with 138 degrees. So the 138 degrees can now go in the triangle. 138 in there. Alright, so we could make a box out of this. You can label things A, B, C, and D if, uh, as you want. It doesn't matter what is what as long as you get angles and sides opposite each other. So let's just say that A is 70 and I don't know the angle across that from that. Let's say that B is 165, but I do know it's opposite angle, so therefore that's beta. And I don't know C, and I don't know gamma. Okay, so ultimately I'm trying to find C, aren't I? This is the part I want right here, is C. So ultimately I'm trying to find that. But I'm going to use law of sines first, and I'm going to calculate alpha. And then I'll be able to calculate gamma, and then I'll be able to use law of sines to calculate C. I know it seems like a roundabout way to do it, um, but it will work. So we're going to say that the sine of 138 degrees is to 165 as the sine of alpha is to 70. And when you do that, you end up with... 16.5 degrees, or got to check for the amb ambiguous case, or 180 minus 16.5 degrees. 180 minus 16.5 degrees is 163.5. So right away, I can tell that this is not valid because 163 added with this 165 would put me way over 180. So that's not valid. So Alpha is going to be 16.5. So let's go ahead and put that in there. 16.5. Okay. So let me pull up a new sheet now so I can give myself a little bit more work room. So now I know that I'm going to figure out gamma. And gamma is going to be 180. We'll subtract um, that 16.5 that we figured out and then the original. 138, 
and you do that you get 25.5 so gamma is 25.5 so I can go back and I can write that in here 25.5 Now I'm ready to go ahead and calculate C. Alright, so now I've got the sine of 25.5 degrees is to C as the sine, you can use either of them here, 138 degrees is to 165. So when you do your algebra, multiply and divide there, you're going to end up with C as 100 and 6.2 miles. Alright, so that's the end of this story problem.